Hello and welcome to the first episode of our Season 6 Practice Odyssey. Woo-hoo. I'm Jen. I'm Alex. And uh, yeah, you join us on our, I don't know whether I want to say most ambitious odyssey yet, because I don't know whether we can ever <laughs> say that after Tafnell and Gobert. Go back and yeah. listen to that if uh, you want to hear two florists. <laughs> in I don't I don't know even how to describe it, Alex. Yeah, in pain, just suffering. Yeah, in pain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and all of the listeners on YouTube would agree, based since that is our highest oh. ranking episode currently. <laughs> yes, yeah, clearly it uh, resonated with many out there, many yes, it players did. out there in the world. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this season we are changing it up a little bit. We, we are. are doing a whole season on the omnibus of Trevor Wise technical books. Why? <laughs> Big. Why? <laughs> oh my gosh. Please keep I feel in. like this is also going to be the season of puns from Alex. So everyone brace themselves because Alex, when she gets in the zone, is the queen of a good pun. Oh, I do love my puns. You do, and you never let an opportunity to put a good pun in slide by. I do not. So, um, so the Trevor Y Omnibus, uh, for those who don't know, is um, a collection of six, I believe, six technique mm-hmm. books, all focusing on particular aspect of flute technique. So, um, yes, this week we are beginning with number one in that omnibus, Tone. And I believe, Alex, you got a bit of information about the book and Trevor Y and what is this crazy I've got massive so much project that we are us. about to embark on. <laughs> mm. uh, but yes, listeners, yeah. so you may have heard us mention Trevor Y in previous episodes, so you might already be familiar with his life and work. But for those who are newcomers to our show, maybe this is the first episode you've ever heard, let's learn a little bit about the flautist Trevor Y. Trevor Y was born in 1935, and he began playing the flute at age 15. So that's rather late in life for a flute player. Contrary to what um, might be expected of a famous flautist, uh, Y did not attend a college of music nor a conservatory. Um, But he did study with a world-renowned flutist and other person we featured on our podcast, or at least his works, Marcel Moise whom Y credits as a major influence on his playing, teaching, and writing career. So Y also studied with flutist Jeffrey Gilbert over in America, and he was influenced by the British singer Alfred Deller and flautist William Bennett, another Brit. So Y was a freelance orchestral and chamber player in London for many years and has several solo recordings. He served as a professor at the Guildhall School of Music London for 14 years and at the Royal Northern College of Music Manchester for 22 years. The latter school awarded him an honorary degree in 1990. All right. So perhaps his best known published works are the six volume practice books for the flute, which concentrate on tone, technique, articulation, intonation, and vibrato, uh, breathing in scales, and advanced practice. Um, He's also published a series titled A Beginner's Book for the Flute, a piccolo practice book, also featured in one of our previous episodes, and several Mm -hmm. arrangements for flute and piano. His biography of Marcel Moise has been published in several languages, and an ongoing collaborative project consists of an encyclopedia of the flute. He travels the world giving masterclasses and concerts, serves on juries for international competitions, and gives recitals. And that's a little bit about the man, the legend, the myth himself, Trevor Y. So Jen, (laughs) uh, did you by any chance do a breakdown for this episode? I sure did. We have started at the beginning because that's a very good place to start. Um, (laughs) So practice book for the flute, book one, the tune. Okay, so basically the book is very clearly structured, which I have to say, Alex, follows our experience of um, the books which Trevor Y has been involved in in previous episodes. It's very yes. clearly structured. So it's split into several sections. The first section is tone exercises, which is in four sections, harmonics, low register, middle register, and high register. Then he's got a section on what he calls gnomes, which we'll get into, I'm sure, a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Things like tone colour, breath control, 
flexibility, pitch control, and then examples in flute repertoire. So Mm -hmm. the book is very straightforward. So that is the breakdown of the book. How I decided to practice it was um, because, uh, actually, I don't own the omnibus of Trevor Y. I have over the years collected all of the books individually. It's a bit strange. Ooh, but I, I can already tell that then that's a different. And um, so difference. all of my books are separate. Yeah. Um, so my first week I worked on the assumption that perhaps I only had book one, uh, Trevor Y. Tone. So Ooh. I just used this book by itself um, because what he does um, quite often is refers to other books within the collection of the omnibus. So um, that was my week one is I would look at just the book in its entirety and then the second week I was allowed to go into the other books of the omnibus just to see like what the difference was, whether you actually really, really need the other books of the omnibus or you could get away with just one book. So that's the general breakdown of the book and I've already kind of really started my week one. I know. So, so Jen, how was your gun. week one? <laughs> so I started at the beginning, as I said. So he gives a few suggestions about how to use the book. In Namely, the first one is really you should practice your low register and middle register at the beginning of your practice, but then leave your mm-hmm. tone exercises for the high register to a later part of your practice day. So that's kind of the advice I took. So I did my tone work in two sessions, two practice kind of brackets, and I started off with a harmonics. I found these harmonic exercises, it's been a while. I've had this book for a really long time. Um, This was the first one I got of his um, practice books. And um, the harmonic exercises are really intense. (laughs) I don't know if you found that out. Like they go really, really high, really, really quickly. And um Oh they do, like, yeah. And and then you gotta transpose them so that you're doing them on a low E flat as well, which gets to a really, really high harmonic, which at the beginning of the day, I mean that's like a lot of embouchure. Um, but what I really liked is the exercises in the low register. I mean I could see I could see the legacy that Marcel Moyes has had on him in this oh, yes. book because mm-hmm. it's very similar to Marcel Moyes' uh, De La Sonorite. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I found it very meditative. I mean, he says, he says, like, keep adding these exercises as you go through the book and get more and more secure. But if you practiced every single one of these exercises... Uh, I think you would be um, here for like five hours. So, um, yes. <laughs> uh, so I decided to take the slightly, I don't know whether it would be frowned upon, but the approach of kind of what do I feel today like practicing? So I would pick different exercises each day from the low warm up section. Um, but one which I really, really loved was the tone color exercise he has in his low oh, register yes. warm up. So he's got two pieces, well, three pieces, but two pieces in particular. So he's got the aquarium from Saint Saint, and mm-hmm. then he's also got uh, the Ravel theme. And he says in the Saint Saint, he wants this very hollow, pure tone. And then in Ravel, you need a darker, richer tone. So you actually have exercises where you're practicing different tone colors um, on the flute. And I don't know, Alex, I don't think I've ever come across a like specific a exercise for, for, for experimenting with different flute colors. Like yeah, it's kind I of implied, mm-hmm. but not actually ever specifically said you should practice the extremes of these colors. It was sitting there, I was sitting there going, oh, wow, this is... And then uh, another particular section I loved was um, how he would uh, practice... He, he isolates the problem with the Cs and C-sharps um, that we have. He does, yeah. He recommends practicing those with harmonics. So you practice the low C uh, first harmonic and then play the natural fingering likewise with the C-sharp, to um, try and match the intonation. Those two notes are quite, uh, for mm-hmm. those who are not aware of this constant struggle that flute players have, C-sharp <laughs> and C-natural are 
these two notes on the flute which are notoriously unstable. Like if any note is going to be wildly out of tune and sound really different in terms of tone, colour and consistency, it's those two notes. Um, just because of the amount of keys you have down. That's what I like Trevor Wise's approach um, to like watch. And so you could fix those problems with the uh, C sharp and the C. That was two things I really, really liked from practicing in my week one. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, How was your okay. week one, Alex? I My week one. So um, <laughs> guess what I did? <laughs> Listeners, uh, based on my past experience with the books. Um, in the practicing, he gives you kind of like a, um, a an order to practice the books in, which I thought was quite odd because it doesn't follow the order of the books themselves inside the omnibus. Oh. So I'm guessing probably, I mean, I, I did look into trying to find a bit of this on the internet, but I was unsuccessful, like why they were in this order. But I'm guessing it's just by publication, like when each book was released. For this, I tried to do it in exactly the same order that he recommended in the book. So mm. first one was tone. Then mm-hmm. second was intonation and vibrato followed Mm -hmm. by technique and at the same time Mm -hmm. advanced practice when needed and then Mm -hmm. four you do after that is breathing and scales interesting Mm. and then yeah and you finish it up with articulation his articulation book which he says you should just do kind of spotted throughout when needed which is really interesting. Mm. I, I thought that like how he put articulation on the side of everything. Anyways, I'm probably jumping into like overall territory. Um, but I, I read over that because it was like on the first, yeah, first page, like the order of it, doing everything. Mm. Um, and so for the next 10 weeks of us doing this, <laughs> um, I was going to try and do everything in the book every week but the weeks that we're doing our podcast like do a really big deep dive into that book mm. so that way I can kind yeah. of get an overall feel of how it feels to do it over 10 weeks versus you know really concentrating on one of the books for two weeks that's my overall goal listeners also know I have a dog now <laughs> he was very cute and takes up <laughs> a, a lot of my free yes. time I know a little puppy five month old little Aussie um so, uh, yeah, we'll see how, how, how well the plan goes. But I did make a little a set of spreadsheets to help keep it all nice and organized to make sure I cover everything within the time. Um, so, yeah. So for the first week, I also did harmonics and I did all of the low register practice just because I also love his exercises with the low register. And I have to say, mm-hmm. I really like um, I know that with a few of our other flute methods they like to start in the upper register with kind of the Mm -hmm. the the premise that you know get the upper register like we're gonna we're scared of it just get it over and done with get that air going (laughs) and you also have to have a very precise embouchure with the upper register yeah right so that you're kind of set up for success that way but I have to say I think more often than not I follow more of the uh the why naturally at the Y school of start with some low notes, kind of warm up the sound and then graduate Mm. onto the, the higher ones. So I think Mm. his way is the, the one that comes most naturally to me. So yeah, so I did that. I didn't do any tone color the first week because I think he mentioned somewhere that it's a little more advanced. And so I tried to save most of the advanced stuff for the follow for the second week. Um, but I did do the middle register, which was, Lovely. Uh, his middle register, or especially around the the E section, is basically my mm. bread and butter from when I was studying. Um, yeah, middle register one and middle register two, I used to do all the time. Oh, so the, I did the exercise. It's such a yep. nice tune. It is. I love that one too. <laughs> Um, but yes, <laughs> the middle register too. You can definitely see De La Sonorite's uh, influence on him. I tried to touch on all yeah. the registers because that's what I would normally do during the week. You know, I wouldn't focus just on one. So I did like low, low. middle, high. Yeah. 
um, in that yep. order. And then I would do a couple of the problem notes as well. What's the problem notes? So the problem notes that he mentions the most about are the top E and F sharp. And I would agree, mm. seeing as we have developed a type of flute mechanism that is just meant to make high E more tolerable. <laughs> so I would, <laughs> I would agree with his assessment there. So he gives you a few exercises that kind of help you warm up to those notes and kind of get them, you know, you kind of go below them, you go, you land right up to them, and then you go above them with some slurs, and also mm -hmm. at different dynamic ranges too. And then he also spots it with a bit of um, harmonics too to kind of help get that intonation, you know, under control. Also... I wanted to say he also puts a big focus on not really playing softly when you're warming up as well. Like a lot of it was yeah. like instead of doing a day crescendo, he has you yeah. like um, go in from piano to forte until you're out of air, which is something yeah. usually the flutist like we don't have as many problems with. But I did start, mm -hmm. I believe it's in this book where he talks about, yeah, writing down the... Um, like how well you can exhale the sound for and then watching your progress over a year and see if it improves. Mm. So I did start that to see if there's any improvement from weeks one to 10. Um, yeah. And then I would finish, I finished up the week by doing a couple of his tone color exercises as well, which I have to say, mm. I just love playing the Cecilia by Foray. Da, 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 oh, da, da, it's beautiful. Da, 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 da. It's so pretty. So uh, mm. That one was probably my mm. favorite. And the Magical by Gobert. Oh, and the Pavade. Oh. He chose some very lovely lyrical he chose pieces really to help you embody like what he was talking about <laughs> with the tone color of like yellow or purple or try to create, capture the spirit of the piece. So, yes, that was a lot of fun <laughs> as well. But I have to say, trying to get a, a lot of this in, maybe my first, not really verdict thing, but... Um, originally I had planned to, you know, do everything, but then I noticed that a lot of his steps within the book are quite gradual. So he'll say, oh, mm. do this and then hop to the next one. But then he doesn't really say like, oh, should you like continue doing this every day? I mean, a, a certain amount of it is the player yeah. knowing themselves, of course, um, yeah, and knowing that's what, what they was, need. That's also yeah. what I found. Yeah. yeah. So mm. cause originally I was like, oh yeah, I'll just do it all day. But then I was like, wait, but if he doesn't want me to do this until I've done this, like, then should I be doing this? <laughs> like, if I'm going at this just, like, from somebody who's never played through this book before. Um, yeah. So I found that a little, like, maybe, like, if it was, I could see this being taught and, like, you know, okay, like, let's work on this together. Oh, you get a sticker. Good job. You finished that exercise. <laughs> let's move on to the next exercise. But as building a practice <laughs> method, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I mean, you would just have to kind of pick and choose kind of what you need the most of that day. Maybe look at the table of contents, be like, oh yeah, this, I'm working on a bunch of Debussy, Le Pre Midi today. So I want to, yeah. the afternoon of a fun. And I know that's got like, you know, that beautiful C sharp at the beginning, which is the, <laughs> the thing that has its own little part in this book. So maybe I would inca include that in my warm up as well as some other things, like maybe some breath control. Uh, quite nice. nice. It did take a while to get through everything. I would say just yeah. working on tone, Per day, I would sometimes take onwards of an hour, so for just tone, yeah, not wow. breathing as well, yeah. and <laughs> quite hefty, uh, which is why I was like, okay, maybe when it's approached as like a like a pedagogical tool, then you're not using it all the time. But for this podcast, we try to cover as much as possible, so when possible. We do. But yeah. Wow. That, that was a hefty week one. <laughs> yeah. Chase was uh, not a fan at one point. Uh, Chase, my puppy, everybody. At one point when I was doing the, 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 the tricky notes, <laughs> uh, wait, what are they called? The official name, the problem notes. Um, he was sitting on the couch Mine's just watching notes. me. Yours called problem notes. Yeah, problem notes is what they're called. Let me Yours double check. It's like the section right after high register, right? Yeah. So my, in my book, it's called gnomes. Why did he change it? Gnomes are so... That's like a great name for it. Because it kind of doesn't make them sound like they're an issue. Maybe felt like, they oh. wouldn't translate. That's interesting. Well, we found a difference in our editions. Excellent. I'm very there excited about that. There we go. We that. have. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> but You're yes, welcome. So. Well, that's why I was like, oh, is it... Like, why is it... Why should you call them problem notes instead of gnomes? But there we that's go. Why. That's why. That... That's that, why. <laughs> that is why. <laughs> um, oh... Yeah, I know. But yes, I walked straight into it. 
I was practicing my problem notes slash gnomes, and Chase was originally on the couch, our little puppy, and then he, I was facing my music stand, and I hear the little pitter-patter, and he yep. is literally down the stairs, just looking at me like, please stop. <laughs> oh, but yes, so yeah. that was my week one, Jen. How did your uh-huh. week two go, where you got to maybe introduce other books that were mentioned in this book? So week two, I was let loose on the rest of the books in the series um which i took full advantage of then i uh so Mm -hmm. with my tone colors which i mentioned in the low register um i went and looked up what the other books said about it and they in the advanced practice that play the d minor version of Aquarium and the Ravel and play and try and make as big a difference between the the tone colors as possible so i decided okay I'm going to go one better than that. I'm going to record myself playing them and see if uh, the tone colours are as different as they feel in my head. Answer was <laughs> no, they are not. So um, I had a lot of fun during the week, like really pushing the extremes of those two tone colours. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so that was really – that was a really fun exercise to do. And I think – gave a lot more flexibility in the colours which I could use in my other plane and so I'd start bringing that into my scales as well. So during just my normal technique warm-ups, um, I would play each scale with a different tone colour just to kind of keep playing around with that. Yeah, so that was really fun and a really cool idea which I enjoyed doing. I enjoyed the, like I did the high register in the both of the weeks, um, it was interesting, like way less exercises for high register than there were for the low register and the middle register. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know whether that was just like a statement of like, it's all chromatic in the high register. There's no leaps. So I thought that was interesting. And, but, um, in this, in this week, I really enjoyed, um, playing around with some of the other, uh, the whistle tones and, uh, I started doing competitions with myself to see how long I could play, hold the tones Ooh. for as long as possible. Um, and it was, and it's good. I had a rule. It has to be loud. <laughs> I was allowed to cheat and make it piano because you can mm-hmm. do super quiet. Um, and also it had to stay in tune. I wasn't allowed to drop the, <laughs> drop the tune in at the end, which again is another cheat. Um, with the whistle tones, they're very, because they're like the tiny little wispy sounds that normally we try and get rid of at the end of a yes a note on the flute. Um, they're very, very light and um, very hard to control, like they wobble a lot. So you need a very steady airstream to keep a whistle tone at the same pitch the whole time. So they're very good for putting a magnifying glass on your airstream and where maybe the weaknesses are in it. And I discovered that actually uh, right at the beginning of my breath, um, was a little bit uncontrolled. Like I tended to like shoot out way more air than I needed to necessarily. And mm-hmm. then also at the end when I started running out of steam. So I, I, I noticed that about my air and I started playing around with how to make it more smooth. And then I noticed that that had really big um, effect on how long I could play a note for and the control I had that for. So I noticed like uh, just in the section of one week, um, mm-hmm. there was there was like a difference of um, quite a few seconds, which was encouraging. Wow. Yeah, already in I such know. a short time. You've already improved a bit. I know, in such a short time. Yeah. I love, I love flute hacks. <laughs> um, you heard yeah, it here, and then listeners. just playing around with his, <laughs> yeah. And then just his flexibility exercises at the end of the book, they're really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and beautiful tunes as well. They look like mini studies and he gives like 10, 10 different ways to practice the study. It's really cool ideas about how you could practice very technically challenging sections in either studies you're working on or in the repertoire which you're learning. Not, it's not just tone, it's also different ways to practice things and how to learn a very Mm -hmm. noty piece. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, so that was my week two. Oh, um, full of all the good things. And um, um, <laughs> the one thing I didn't get to go to, so I was going to, I had this beautiful idea that every day I would record myself playing one of the examples mm-hmm. of pieces from the end of the book. 
never got around to it. As you said, it takes a really long time to play yeah. with these. Considering how small this book is compared to, you know, <laughs> I hate to say it again, TG, Tough and Go Beer, you know, it took a long yeah. time to complete. And I think half of it's also, which I might talk about in the verdict, is like, you know, also just reading his notes as well, because they're very, mm. they're very helpful and useful, but then it also takes time to make sure to apply what he says while doing it. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, yeah it's, really it was a, a surprising little beast. <laughs> it was, yes, deceptively. How was your week too, Alex? Very different from week one? <laughs> uh, it wasn't too different. Um, one of the issues that I already mentioned that I wasn't sure about is that I, for a book that's all about tone color, he discusses not very much about breath control. And I, I often find that those two are very related because if you don't have a good, since the flute is such like a, you know, an air based instrument, you really mm. need like a good column of air. And so, and mm. he doesn't talk about it a lot, but he does mention that you can look further in book five a little bit at some point. And so I, in week two, I was like, I'm going to book five. Where's my breathing yeah. exercises? Um, so that was probably one difference. Um, maybe it's just mm. also because, you know, since I have allergies and other issues with um, sinuses and breathing has always been a struggle for me, <laughs> which sounds mm. funny saying because it's one of the things we do most naturally, like you've done it since you were a baby. Um, I always make sure there's an <laughs> emphasis of my practicing on breathing, you know, um, mm -hmm. so that was something that I found a little odd. But then he does have a whole book about breathing and scales, which we will do later. Um, but yes, yeah, so I did um, add in some of his his section uh, from book five about breathing in the body and longevity, which we'll delve into Ooh. later on this podcast. But I did add that in, and I felt like that was a really nice way. Like He, he discusses that in depth of like how to take like a good breath and offers um, a few exercises, like exercise one and two, and I did write mm. down my first one. So we've got it here. Uh, so for January mm. uh, 2022, I, my expansion, I, where you measure yourself when you're fully expanded, um, was oh, 6.5 yeah. centimeters. So I recorded it. Okay. We'll see. Okay. Um, uh, if it changes. So... He yeah. says, untrained, your expansion is likely to be between 2.5 and 5. So <laughs> I'm not untrained, but it was a little lower than I would have liked. So he says that for, yeah. you know, uh, maybe for more people, he says you can, should continue until your contraction is in about 10 to 12.5. So I need to, to double that. So, whoa. although, I mean, how much of this is also based on how big you are Oh, wait, no, it is a yeah. measurement. I, but we'll get into that later once we get to that book. But I am taking notes so that I can maybe report back to the listeners. Mm. So uh, so mm. I did do some extra bits with the breathing. Um, yeah. I also added in the tone color. I didn't do that in week one. Um, so I mm -hmm. added the tone color exercises in for week two. Uh, please enjoy this um, <laughs> page turning ASMR as I flip over to it. <laughs> um <laughs> Which I I really enjoyed how they 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 include so many leaps um, in the sound. Yeah. So instead of just being gradual step wise, where you can really make sure that the tone on each note is the same, so you don't. So like ideally, when you play, it's like la 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 la. So they're all sounding the same mm -hmm. volume, same pitch. So they all are like they all have the same color. Nothing sounds out of place. Um, but when mm. you do these, it's really easy for something to like kind of pop out. So you'd be like, la, 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 yeah. la, la, or something where it doesn't yeah. sound the same as the other ones. And so I like that he started gradually with just thirds and then built up mm. to um, like uh, where he would jump up like from like a, a so to a do um, if we're doing it in solfege. So slowly like increasing the difficulty of it and then in starting in the low register and then working your way up to the upper register. But I was also mm. sad in general that, yeah, like I noticed in some of the sections, he doesn't do as much in the upper register. I also implemented, because he does say the full sequence of keys here can be found in the complete daily exercises. So I did use it there, but they aren't in here. So 
for this book, I think yeah. that would be like really good for beginners and then hop over for the complete sequence in the daily exercises, mm. which I ended up doing yeah. a little bit of, but not as much as I'd like because it was taking a lot longer than anticipated <laughs> to get through everything. Um, there are only so many hours in the day. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, I did that. And I think the only other difference was I also did the advanced tone color. So I didn't do any tone color in the first week. And a little more about the pitch control, which I liked his little diagrams of how he um, recommended to work on it initially and then how he made it more difficult moving forward. So I think that's really it. The rest of it I kind of repeated from the first week. Um, The harmonics really weren't so tricky. I mean, like what you were saying when we had to do the (laughs) E-flats. That was hard. (laughs) Um, But luckily, I think the first week I just did the the exercises that were written. And then the second week I upped the intensity and did the other one. So first week wasn't so bad. Mm. Second week I was like, nah. (laughs) But I've done a lot of work. I don't know if it's an American concept or something, but I, I find mm. that Americans are often like the harmonics, like you got to play your harmonics every day, at least where I'm from, yeah. where I learned. So for me, it yeah. wasn't so crazy because I had already had that kind of as a background. Yeah. But, um, I just found very different from like, say, Bernold's um, souffle yes. in, in the souffle, souffle mm. book. His, his harmonics don't go above, they don't go as high. They're yes. a bit more gentle. <laughs> um, whereas, yeah, this one was very high and quite a tricky little passage to place. Yeah, I wish you he'd put in a few extra often. notes about how to approach them. Like, uh, mm. just for like anyone who's new here to, to studying mm. from these books, because mm. like, um, <laughs> my professor in college who wrote a book as well, it has lots of harmonics. She puts in notes about how to approach them so that your tone yeah. doesn't suffer um, and I always mm. found those quite helpful, but I did not really, I tried not to apply them too much here because, you know, in theory, we're going at this, like we have no other books at our disposal. We make comments disposal. about the other yes. books and how they might be similar or different, but yeah. that's about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, he just says, increase the airspeed required for the higher harmonics, <laughs> which yeah, is true so to a certain degree, just... but there's also other aspects in ch- at play too. So. <laughs> for those high harmonics, you do need to alter your ambition a little. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, um, <laughs> yep. I believe everyone would yeah. agree with that. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I'd say that was my week too. Yeah. Maybe we can talk about how, what you thought overall, Jen, of your two weeks playing out of the, out of book one, Tone by Trevor mm. Y. Why was it helpful? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Sorry, listeners, in oh, advance yeah. for this season. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> My verdict. Um, look, all in all, uh, it's understandable why this is one of the uh, books of flute technique. This is one of the big ones. Um, I really enjoyed how methodical it is. I enjoyed how, um, as you said, just the sheer amount of information he gives you and advice mm-hmm. and tips he gives you um, about each section of the tone. I guess, yeah, like like you, the one point where I struggled with was, okay, so do we keep doing all the exercises and keep adding them on as we conquer the first exercise or do we pick and choose? So I was a bit unclear about how much time to spend in terms of that. But I think I think you're right. In terms of like a pedagogical tool where either you have a teacher who's telling you practice this exercise Mm -hmm. or you yourself have the ability to have taken that role now and you say okay I today I need to do this a b and c exercise to get warmed up ready for this I think it works really well with the pick and choose picking and choosing I don't think it really suffers from being a book on its own it doesn't really, I didn't really feel like I was missing out hugely um, from practicing with just this book as opposed to when I had access yeah. to the rest yeah, of the agree. other books in the series. Um, so it's, it's pretty independent. Um, and, and in some ways it was way more than a tone book. Like it's, it's also an intonation book. It's a book on breath control. 
Yeah, and and even practice techniques about how to practice difficult technical passages. So um, it's awesome. There we go. We started <laughs> well, Trevor Y. Thank you Book for the beginning awesome. of season six. It's been great, <laughs> although very challenging, and I'm getting filled with a little bit of trepidation about what's in store next. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> we'll oh. see. I know. I'm excited. Yeah. How's your ver- What's your verdict, Alex? Uh, I think it's quite similar to yours. Mm. Often it is because great minds think alike. Oh. <laughs> um, or maybe they differ and <laughs> have excellent points that both of them make up. Who knows? <laughs> uh, yes, I would say it. Um, it is very much I, when I came into this, I was like, oh, I'm probably going to it's going to be similar to his Piccolo book mm-hmm. where he references all these other random books. And you have to pull those. So you actually get mm-hmm. the exercises. Mm-hmm. I was thinking since that was also sort of an omnibus, it would be similar. But luckily, like you noticed, Jen, it's not. It's very much its own standalone book, yep. which you can use. And the only time like the majority of the references he makes to other books is for further exercises yeah. for further development like oh once you've conquered this yeah try the ones in my complete daily exercise yeah. so try the ones in advanced practice mm-hmm. so it's very much set up like for i would say maybe a flute player who's who can play a chromatic scale comfortably you know you know all of the notes from like maybe the the bass c all the way up to high c mm-hmm. Not even to high C. Like maybe you've played it once or twice and experimented with it. Yeah. But once you have a, a, a grasp on that, like going into this and really helping to develop your tone mm-hmm. color, like getting the differences between a happy and sad sound on the notes without it affecting your intonation yeah. or, you know, like mm. the, the the overall timbre of the instrument. Yeah. Um, so I really liked that because then it's like, oh, okay, like you've – if you're doing this with the teacher, he always gives like a really nice little bit to read ahead of time, mm-hmm. which I have found super helpful and have underlined lots of um, <laughs> little passages and ways that he said that, he, you know, you should practice like his favorite phrase of it's all a question of time, patience and intelligent, intelligent work. work, which is very true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Intelligent work. So, um yeah, so I really like that because it's it kind of helps you progress as a flute player. So if you're mm. starting like on working on actual tone development because you're able to play the notes now mm-hmm. and making sure that they sound lovely, then working through this and then when he tells you like, okay, like you're doing really well with this, but maybe you're having you know with the middle register, but your middle E is about is still cracking. So look at proper flute playing. I talk about it a little bit there. You could delve further. Yeah. So I really enjoyed that. It really just helped enhance it instead of being something where you needed it for the book to make sense. <laughs> yeah. So that was really good. I was very happy about that. No. Nice. Uh, it does take a long time if you want to try and touch on everything he does here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also very possible to use just a little bit of what he does and get in a nice, you know, um, succinct tone color, pra- like a, a tone practice yeah. um, all together. Like you could touch on a little bit of low, middle, and high register, Mm -hmm. followed with some nice tone color exercises, and then do a little bit of like flexibility and pitch control. Um, And then, yeah, if you're doing a piece with a lot of C sharps, maybe concentrate on that. Um, But uh, but yeah, overall, great, excellent, put together. And he kind of, it's like a great warm up book, like a great first book before you delve into the other greats as well. Mm. Like this is in no means like, not at the same level, you know, as like Marcel Maurice mm. and Tafanel and Gobert. Mm. But if you wanted something to kind of, before diving into those, which are just tons of exercises and they all look super daunting, yeah. this would be a great way to like warm yourself up mm. to it. It's like a nice cup of hot tea. Yeah, that's morning. a great point. It or is coffee. very accessible. <laughs> yeah. So I think why we chose it <laughs> is... Very clear. Oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying know, to get count how many puns you've pun. done. I think this is oh, number thanks. five. Five puns this oh, episode. Let's oh. keep the record yeah. going. So uh, I think I think that's <laughs> I think that's it for this week. So if you want to join us, uh, we will be delving into book two of the great omnibus of Trevor Y, uh, which I believe is technique. Yes. So this is technique. this is where our fingers will fall off. Um, uh, or will they not fall off? Or maybe not Tune fall in. off. <laughs> 
who knows you'll have to tune why in. didn't they fall off oh my gosh that's six. <laughs> also if you want to like see whether alex can keep breaking her pun record per episode also tune in uh i think the challenge will well and truly be accepted i think it's very feasible it's very feasible mm-hmm. uh so you can find the practice odyssey on all podcast platforms um we'd also love to hear from you if you've played through this book as well write to us tell us what you thought what was your verdict and you can uh, contact us at thepracticeodyssey at gmail.com or you can leave us a rating or comment mm-hmm. on apple podcasts um, we're also on youtube uh, if you're listening to us on youtube please subscribe it really helps us yes. and you can also leave us a comment there as well the music in this episode is by the marvelous alessandra woods and the show art is Woof-woof. from ivan potter smith anyway hope you have a great couple of weeks we'll see you next time listeners thanks for tuning in bye bye, bye.